Hi there, welcome back to Patrol's Review. In this episode, first spaceship on Venus, known originally as the Silent Star, an East German Polish co production from the year 1960, directed by Kurt Metzik. Film number 8 on the Public Domain Madness series. Hi there, welcome back to Patrol's Review, your guide to the world of science fiction action horror, with me, your host, Mila Sipka. Now, in this episode, we, this is the eighth installment of the Public Domain Madness series, or the title is PD Madness on my titles. And this is the eighth science fiction or the eighth public domain film I've uh, reviewed out of the total of 13. So there's still another, quite a few to go. <laughs> now, in this, uh, this episode, we'll look at the film's the first spaceship on Venus, which originally was called Silent Star. This was a East German Polish co production, as a co production between Poland and the Communist government of East Germany, which premiered in East Germany on the 26th of February 1960. And then few days later, on the 7th of March, 1960, for Poland. This was actually the most most expensive film that East Germany actually financed at the time. Now, there's quite a few things I have to say about this film, but first, for the story. In an alternate 1985, where socialism rules, rules the world, a spool of magnetic tape is found in the vicinity of the region where the Tunguska explosion occurred back in 1906. Determined to be of alien origin, the spool was translated after much difficulty and found to be the black box flight data recorder of an alien spacecraft that came from Venus and that the Venusians were planning to inflict nuclear war onto the Earth. In a rush to contact Venus to try to stop their plans, or for they haven't gone through with their war plans for the better part of 77 years, a multinational team of experts handpicked for walk reasons are sent to an, an advanced space rocket to Venus to respond. But upon reaching the planet, the crew discovered the reason why Venus never went through with the war plans. It turns out that due to a tech malfunction, the advanced nuclear weaponry, during a test, the Venusians accidentally wiped themselves out in the mushroom cloud. The whole race gone. <laughs> now, this was the most expensive film ever made by the German Dem Democratic Republic, the somewhat pretentious official title of the Communist State of East Germany that lasted from the mid 1940s right up until 1989 with the fall of the Berlin Wall and was a co production with Poland. The script was based on an early science fiction novel by legendary Polish genre writer Stanislaw Lem, although Lem had to add pro-socialist elements in his book to get, in order to get it published, and practically disowned the book and absolutely hated the film adaptation. I should also take a moment to explain something vital for genre fans. Science fiction urban legend has it that the American dub version, released under the title of First Spaceship of Venus, the title I'm going by for this review, was really heavily edited down from the original film titled The Silent Star, in that some have called the uncut version of the film to be running from anywhere between 130 minutes, that's 2 hours and 10 minutes, to 4 hours. Well, logic control, here are the facts. The reality is that the English dub was cut, but only by about 10 minutes or so. The uncut version only clocks in about 90 minutes. So there goes that myth. Now, regardless of which version you see, the reality is that the first spaceship of Venus is an extremely boring and unflinchingly socialist sci-fi turkey. I was sure the visual effects were pretty decent for 1960, clearly they didn't spend the mega bucks they budgeted this thing with, with an awesome triple thrust space rocket that blows away any other rocket made during the decade in the film, and said this sounds pretty damn good. But, that but is reserved for the idiotically applied storyline characters. While Hollywood has been for the past few years constantly hammered by the cult of 2017, my turn for the socialist walkers who have been forcing filmmakers to include ethnic and sexualistic minorities in their films, purely to tick the circle of diversity box without actually having any positive effect in the works, which is the reason why every film and TV show that has gone woke has failed in both the cinema and on TV. The fact is that socialism has, has always tried to market itself as being for all people by casting all people in their associated works, a bit like the asylum where they cast just ordinary people in their films, which never works. The thing is that the woke agenda is pure garbage. I don't mind having ethnic minorities in the films that I watch, as long as the story supports them, not having them just there just because some little group of political activists wants them to be there. Now, there have been plenty of classic genre films that manage to feature ethnic minorities in a positive light, but don't have them there just gratuitously. Same goes for the LGBT crowd, although it's a bit hard to find films out there that do that one right, given that LGBT characters aren't exactly that commonly applied. In this clunker, the cats are a mix of different nationalities, but the first sci-fi work to really apply that sort of thing successfully was the original series of Star Trek. 
Hence, the space crew here have no names in the original German Polish dub, only titles like Japanese doctor or German pilot, and are never mentioned by name in the original dub, only in the English dub the ADR people had to add the names in. Also, the film's anti nuclear message is, well, it's basically belted over your head with solely the sledgehammer. The Venusians, which we never see them outside their shadows permanently burned to the walls of one of their dead cities, was given the, the impression of being a warlike race wanted to invade Earth, but who ultimately fell foul of their own scheming when the advanced technology backfired on them with fatal results. This was a clear allegory to the nuclear devastation of the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki during World War II, or for the reality is that the Japanese were given the least costly way out of the war. If the USA had invaded Japan instead of using their bombs, the death toll would have been significantly much higher and more devastating. If I do believe that Nagasaki's bombing was uncalled for, Nagasaki wasn't even originally a target. It was only chosen because the bomber crew ran into bad weather and said, you know, and they just changed targets at the last minute. There was even reference to Hiroshima in the original dub that was changed for the English dub. The whole mission is pointless if you take a moment to think about it. The Venusians were planning to invade the Earth with the Nukios, right? Well, that scout ship blew up in 1908 over the Tunguska region, which killed nobody but scorched hell, hell of a, a lot of trees. And their version of Black Box wasn't found until 1985. So when the friggin' hell was taking them so long to invade, you might ask. Without getting the luxury of knowing that Venusians nuked themselves by accident during a botched weapons test, you'd be questioning the validity of sending a space mission in such haste to a planet where your suspicions would already be on full alert. Unless the Venusians have incredibly long lifespans or were incredibly patient, 77 years is a heck of a long time to stage a war in. So what do you think about that? Now, those living in former Eastern Bloc countries don't speak too highly of this film, dismissing it as pure communistic propaganda, and the only audience it seems to have are those pretentious art house types in the Western world, and those who come across the film on one of those mini multi-pack, public domain multi-packs that are floating around. Not a terribly, terribly great film at all, but it does get some points for the cool rocket and it's decent for the time effects, so a D plus is one I'm giving it, which is a 3 out of 10. Basically means it's like real low mediocre. There's no gore or nudity in this film, although the Venusians are only seen as scorched shadows and the Dead Sea's walls. And like I said, this is a public domain film, so you can pretty much find it anywhere. I don't know about the silent star, I think maybe that one. The original version is public domain, I'm not sure. After all, the East German government did fall like more than 30 years ago. Okay, that's it for that review. There's still, let's see. Uh, five more reviews left to go in this PD Manners, then I'll go back to my regular stuff. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that review. And, you know, also when you, for anyone in Australia, just go out with a mask. Don't take things to chance. That's wrong nowadays. Masks are mandatory. And get a vaccine when it comes out, too. That makes things easier. Okay, guys. See you around next time.